So good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about calcium oscillation from non-exciting cell. So, as you already know, the Nobel Prize was rewarded to the some two TRPV1 and PHO ion channel, which are in charge of temperature, heat pain, and touch and proprioception. So many people are interesting about the calcium uptake. When you see this cell membrane, those two ion channel are heavily involved in calcium uptake from the extracellular media to the inside. In case of pH 2 and 1, not only cell membrane, but also nucleus ER membrane, which means from cytosol to nucleus, are involved. And then when you look at the electricity, so there are commercially available electricity machine. For example, TENS is a method of pain relief involving the use of mild electrical current. Their electrical current is around 1 milli, 100 milliampere, and the frequency is relatively lower than others, 50 hertz. But there are another developed machine, which is called ICT. It's the most common type of electrical muscle stimulation used to, used to treat chronic pain, which has over 1,000 to 4,000 so the reason why I show this, these two machines is that the clinician from, from long time ago, they use electricity to regulate some cell or tissue behavior, especially pain and muscle. And then they suggest the underlying mechanism. When they think about the pain, this is the pain. When pain, pain starts, they follow this way, and through this gate, they touch the brain, and your brain feels pain. But when there is your electrical stimulation, they, they are faster than pain signal. Electrical signal, they can go through this gate first, and then touch the brain first, then pain signal. So there is the, the so the patient doesn't feel pain because electricity current signal they come to the brain first and then many people say that what is the underlying mechanism aside this uh, gate control hypothesis there are, there are many reported about cell proliferation migration and even secretum increase on the electrical stimulus. But we have to think about the what is the underlying mechanical transduction involved in electrical stimulus. So this is example of calcium imaging. So when you want when you want to analyze the calcium, just you look at the one cell, okay? Let's see this cell, they are blinking, so you can see how they show. Blink, 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 blink. They relatively continuously blink, 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 right? But under ES, when you, under ES or your certain condition or your material, either way to find after calcium dying imaging, and then when you look at the one cell, this cell, for example. Sorry, yeah. They blink, but suddenly the blink it disappeared. One more time, when you maybe this around cell, you just pick up the one cell which blink and then continuously observe how they behave. Their blink speed or intensity those are changed under certain circumstances. But, okay, 
now I'm, I did electrical stimulus. And then I used gadolinium, which is extracellular calcium uptake. So gadolinium is especially for preventing the stretch or tension mediated calcium ion channel. So they are working only on extracellular level. The gadolinium ion, they never go inside. They already reported a lot. So when you treat gadolinium, they just block like pH 1 and 2 or other mechanosensitive ion channel. And then while we block it, what will happen? Sorry. Okay, one more time. Oh, sorry. So when you when you see this center cell, you can see relatively to in the middle condition, they relatively maintain their oscillation. So like this, when you capture the images around 3 to 20 minutes, and then while you are capturing, after you're capturing images, and then you can make video and then see how the cell blink their calcium intensity, and then you can catch the idea. They are increase or decrease or maintain. So from this video, you can manually calculate the calcium intensity. So when I, so those are like, let's say 100 cell. So as you can see, not all cells blink because the calcium oscillation always happen in G0 geon and G0 geon phase. So some cells are, are involved G2, and another phase. So this, those kind of cells didn't have oscillation. So you analyze based on like you have to make the major incubation time, like for example, five, five minutes. So you pick up the cell which are blink within five minutes, maybe two times, and then you to track the cell, how, how blink goes on. They are continuous, decrease, or enhance, okay? So from, not all cell, but you just select a blink cell, and then when you catch how they going up, you can see just normal condition, they make this kind of oscillation. But when I do certain treatment, this oscillation is gone. So I use five minutes as a basal level. So I pick up the cell, which has two oscillation at least. And then, under gadolinium, gadolinium treatment, when I do this treatment, the, I can see the maintenance of the oscillation. So after getting this oscillation graph, and then you have to do quantification. So many people, so you can refer to many papers. So when I search it, they do like amplitude, last, and first. This is the first. This is the last. Okay, so wonder means that this initial peak maintain to the end, 100. Zero means initially they have this peak, but in the end, they are gone. Okay, so this kind of quantification you can do. Another one is per minute, how much of calcium oscillation event. This one peak is one calcium oscillation. So around 0.4 means as a one minute, 0.4 calcium oscillation happen. But yes, they are somehow decreased because under ES condition, their oscillation is gone. So their total number of calcium oscillation decrease. And then you can link this kind of calcium oscillation to the cell behavior you are focusing. For example, cell proliferation, migration, secretome, differentiation, so any kind of thing you can correlate together. So the lecture why I did today with you is that you have many, you have certain experiment by your hands, so you also consider to use this calcium oscillation assay as a one of the 
physiological factor. So cell, they try to use discussion modulation as a secondary messenger to modulate your, your cellular behaviors. And then how you will do? So there are two ways to do the calcium imaging. First, GCAM based calcium plus image we have. Another one is fluorogenic calcium dye. So okay, in case of dye, fluor 4, car 5 to 0, which are all available in nitrogen. And then the, the unmarried of this one is that you just only measure one time point. After measuring, so okay, for example, you culture your cell on different stiffness gel, and then after dyeing the cell, and then maybe within two hours, you have to measure. And then over time, the cell pretty toxicity, so you cannot measure again. But very strong and sensitive. This GCAM calcium plasmid, those three, these whole things are available in nitrogen. The three is cytosol calcium imaging dye. This one is ER calcium imaging dye. This is because of NNS, GCAM, this plasmid go to the nucleus, so we can detect the nucleus calcium imaging. The merit is that you can do several times. Today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, or one, four, six hours. While you are culturing the cell on different stiffness, you can track the how calcium imaging, calcium oscillation happen. But a merit is that compared to the this uh, commercially dye, the sensitivity is a little low, but they are also compatible. And in case of this GCAM plasmid, there are two options. One is flat, the other one is single dye. Single dye means so you can choose one excitation wavelength. For example, green, red, blue, most of them green or red. Flat dye means maybe when you study the flat, flat they use two different, uh, two different wavelengths. So when you excite it, one wavelength, and then they transfer the energy to the other wavelengths. So they have to use two laser. So this is some um, different. So flat and single diet, we can do all of them in our fixed floor comfort machine. So as a first trial, I suggest to use single diet, more easy, and then and more easy. But flat is already known that flat has has higher sensitivity than single diet. But as a beginner, I prefer to suggest to use single diet. And then okay. Let's, for example, when you have this calcium plasmid, plasmid, they should be transfected to the cell. So from Lipo 3000 and Takara x -Fat, you transfect this cell using this plasmid. And then after one or two days incubation, you can see the signal. So right after transfection, after one day and two days, you just image this cell, not confocal machine, just normal process machine, and then let's say your dye is for green, and then when you see the green signal, you can see, but you can see the green, which means that, oh, transfectives succeed. But it's not easy to see the calcium oscillation using normal conventional um, microscope machine. For doing that, you need confocal machine. But before that, you have to confirm how much of a cell are transfected. So I suggest at least 20 or 30%. Hmm. So you have to optimize the transcription trans trans condition and incubation time, sometime four hour, overnight, 24 hour, without FPS, with FPS. Okay. And then using camera imaging, you can do the imaging. So our fifth confocal machine, there are two ways. One is camera, the other one is confocal. The different thing is that camera is more camera is faster than confocal. So they just measure like 10 milliseconds. They capture the 10 millisecond of calcium intensity from the camera. But in case of confocal, because of shutting off and on time, it's not easy to do like that. 
So when you do the camera, so always you have to use the camera for cache imaging. And then uh, people mentioned that phenol, phenol red free preferred because this phenol can have a lot of a lot of background, especially for green and red images. But when you use phenol, in in phenol included media, also it's fine. You can see something. But for best cache imaging, prefer to use phenol phenol free. Okay, in case of process dye, you incubate the cell with dye, normally in HBSS. This HBSS or phenol red free basal media without any supplement, any FBS. And then for certain hours of dye incubation, and then uh, many dye, they suggest to use uh, room temperature 30 minutes for Esterification. The esterification is to make the dye sustainable in the cell. Okay, because without this esterification process, while you are doing calcium imaging, some cells are breached faster, or some cells they increase the intensity a lot while you are doing the doing imaging. But this intensity increases not from your like treatment, but from the improper de-esterification. And then you wash the cell with HBS three times, and then do the imaging under certain media. Okay. And then which kind of which kind of dish you are using? 24 and 6 well. Confocal, they can give high resolution. So you can do 20 or 63 x. A normal dish, just for optimization of your condition, try and error. But uh, when you do the 63, 63x, uh, the resolution is not achieved from normal dish. But comfortable dish, you can see clearly the high resolution. So I suggest first normal dish and do certain experiment, and then when you feel set up the condition, and then transfer the condition to comfortable dish. And then from my from many uh, try and error, I prefer to use like for cytogel cache imaging, one second per frame, and then the in, so and then the duration time of the capture camera is 50 to 200 millisecond, which means per second, just this camera capture during 50 millisecond per one second, and then next one second. They open the camera, 50 millisecond uptake uh, intensity, and then close. Like that, you can do 3 to 20 minutes. But in case of ER calcium imaging, prefer to use more, prefer to use shorter time, 0.5 second per frame, and then 50 to 100 millisecond. For example, if you use this 0.5 second, but when you use 50 millisecond, the machine is delayed because you set up the 0.5 second, but they capture the images 50 millisecond, but they need time for operation. So even though you did use fixed 0.5 second, depending on which kind of duration time you are picking, this can be delayed or not. So when you capture images, you can track all the every fitting condition is well performed or not. This is depending on this duration time. And then most important thing is that while you are dyeing the cell or plasmid inspection or imaging, cell morphology is relatively maintained as a normal behavior, normal cell morphology. When cell morphology is uh, dramatically shrinked or many of them are detached, so you can see from your eye, not from uh, cell viable tests like just by eye observation, you can feel less than 80%, not recommended. But as a first or second trial, as a trial error, you can do the imaging. But as a for best imaging condition, cell morphology may, should be maintained, normal, normal morphology as much as possible. And the viability is over 80%. So this is one example. Let's imagine when you have this dye, this is CAR520 dye, AM. AM means they are, this AM functional group 
is added this dye to accelerate the penetration of this dye to the inside of the cell. Calcium influence assay is a preferred method for monitoring GPCR or calcium channel. This is known for instance. Firstly, once it enters the cell, the lipophilic AM blocking groups are cleared by SRH, resulting in a negative charge fluorescence dye that stay inside the cell. So this AM, they first never fluorescent, but once they are cleaved inside the cell by this enzyme, they are charged negatively and then attached to the calcium. And then they stay inside of the cell. As the dye binds to the calcium inside of the cell, fluorescence intensity is greatly enhanced. And I told you about the deacidification. Deacidification means that once you incubate this dye, and then without deacidification, there is a free standard uh, calcium 5 to 0 AM, which is not clipped yet by this asteroid. And then, so this deacidification is to remove this non-cleaved dye inside of cell. Okay, so we have we have to do that all dye after uptaking of inside of cell, they all cleaved properly, and then they all attached to calcium, certain amount. So to remove a free dye which are non-cleaved by the asteroid. This low, mar low mar temperature condition, 30 minutes, they can remove this dye. Okay, let's see the procedure. Oil cell, and they incubate this dye, dilute in HBSS for 30 minutes to 2 hours. And then this pruning 5, 1, 2, 7, they are 1% or 0.1%, they are helpful for solubility increase. Without this, sometimes you can see many precipitation of the dye inside of the media, which is not, which is not good. So this pluronic F127, they increase solubility, but sometimes this is toxic to the cell. So depending on your condition, you can vary the concentration, 0.1% or 1%. And then you remove this calcium dye and then incubate them RT in HBSS. This is the acidification. non cleave dye, they are go outside, and then there is no remaining free dye inside the cell. Okay. So this the acidification condition is for increasing stability of the dye. And then you can maintain the calcium imaging continuously, properly, and non, there's no much of a fluctuation. And then wash the cell with HBS three times again, and then capture the images using this calcium 5 to 0 using normal FITC channel. Notice that cell, as much as cell should be protected from the light, be quick and one time performation. If your cell is sensitive, sensitive protocol should be modified, like HBSS replaced by Bayesian media. Normally, we recommend not to use the FBS. But normal HBSS or basal media, they have some toxicity to the cell. You can include like 1% FBS or 0.1% FBS, depending on your, your condition. So there are many uh, tricks you can modify and optimize it. But so if you want to do some experiment, once you set up your experiment and then let me know, I will guide you how to, what is the fast way to measure the calcium imaging. But most important thing is that Cell morphology and viability should be maintained as much as normal condition. Well, now it's perfect. But when they are significantly changed the cell morphology, you should consider to optimize the incubation time or this use of proning F127 and then use of the FBS or any kind of supplement to consider using it. Okay, this is some basic. Uh, procedure how you do the calcium imaging and then let's check the calcium channel so okay why how calcium is uptaken inside the cell so calcium is strongly regulated inside the cell
because always the media calcium is 10 or 20 times higher than inside the, inside the cell. When there is too much toxic, too much of calcium inside the cell, this is some signal of apoptosis. Okay. So you, one thing you have to remember is that calcium is strongly regulated by the cell. And the, which kind of calcium channel they have? Number one is, especially for firing cell, firing cell is neuron cell or brain cell. This firing cell, they have voltage gated, L-type, N-type, P-type, R-type, T-type, many kind of calcium channel which are regulated by voltage. So sometimes soon muscle cell, some bone, or spinal cord, cortical neuron, brain, neuron, and any kind of bone. So as you can see, the so bone cell also very reactive to the compression or voltage. So bone, muscle, neuron, which have calcium channel. The other one is that non-exciting cell, or sometimes exciting cell also have this kind of calcium channel type two, like ligand gated. Ligand gated means that some receptor ligand interaction is needed for doing making this calcium uptake or calcium release, which means previous voltage gate, they don't need any ligand. They don't need any interaction. They need voltage, certain power. But this ligand gate channel, they need protein-protein interaction. In case of IP3 receptor, they need IP3. Rodonin receptor, they need uh, caffeine. The two-pole channel, or certain amino acid. And also calcium, they are needed. Another, another one. So this kind of ligand gated, we, there are many, they are well focused for non-exciting cell, especially. So the type is IP3 receptor, ITP3 receptor 1, 2, 3. They are located in ER, SR. Actually, as you know, nucleus ER, SR, they are all linked physically. And then this rodonin receptor, which are heavily involved in, heavily well known as a caffeine receptor. Rodonin 1, 2, 3. Also, they are located in ER and SR. And two port channel, 1, 2, PKD2, ORI123. This ORI123 is well known as SOC, store operated channel, which is very famous by the, which is located in the plasma membrane. And this provides calcium signal to the cytoplasm. So also you have to remember the direction of the calcium. This ORI123, they export the calcium from the media to the cytosol. But in case of IP3, they release from ERSR to the cytosol. So you always, you always think about, when you think about a certain channel, the channel location, ERSR, cell membrane, both of them, plus, what is the direction? ER to cytosol, cytosol, cytosol to media, or media to cytosol, cytosol to ER. There are many directions and many locations. So let's see, one by one. And there are another type, yeah, transient receptor potential channel. This is also detected for non-excited cell and excited cell. Most of them, they are located in the plasma membrane. Why we are focusing on this channel is that many of these channels made it a very variety of sensations such as pain, temperature, different kinds of taste, pressure, vision in the body. Some therapy channels are sold to be behave like microscope thermometer and used in animals to sense hot and cold. So some therapy channels are activated by molecules found in spices like garlic, chili peppers, wasabi. Others are activated by the mental, camphor, peppermint, and cooling agent. Yet others are activated by molecules found in cannabis or cetabia. Some act as a sensor of osmotic pressure, volume, stretch vibration. You can see my meaning, right? The TRP channel is very diversely activated. 
not ligand. Sometimes they are ligand activated, but sometimes they are mechanosensitivity, mechanotransduction mediated, they are activated. So when you see some paper, read the paper, some people already mentioned, let's say, osmotic pressure related to the TRPC or TRPM. So in stress reaction cell, control site they behave to be a certain TRP ion channel. Okay? Okay, this is certain video of I share the video of this maybe very clearly they So this is the epithelial cell. So you can see this blink. Yeah, they are blink a lot. This is a calcium imaging. You can see not all cells blink at one time. But you can you can see feel some like this calcium also they strongly link to the neighboring cell. Yeah. Because especially this epithelial cell, they are linked together by the ecadrine. So Many people think that the calcium also transport among the cell. Anyhow, this is some um, yeah, image of the calcium oscillation. And then from now on, I continuously mention about the certain channel and the inhibitor. So the, the reason why I do this is that many of them, you see this page, and next page, you also see the same things for increasing your memory. So once you see what is the meaning of this ion channel, what is the meaning of this ion channel inhibitor, uh, when you see this class, anyhow, you have some permeability. You, are, you can be familiar about this ion channel and inhibitor. That's the point of this class. OK, let's see about this yeah, SOC. Store operated calcium channel. So, SOC, the well known SOC is, as I told you, ORI123. ORI123. There are many detected in non excitable cell. Okay, let's track the how ORI's, ORI ion channel they activate it. Once ORI ion channel is open, this is a membrane, media to cytosol calcium uptake. Okay, while they are doing that, as, as I told you, this inside of calcium concentration always 10 times lower than outside. So they want to maintain the calcium, value, calcium concentration. How? They are using this PMCA for calcium pump to secrete the calcium to the outside. One balance as a counter. The, the other one is that when calcium is uptake to the inside of the cell, and then uh, this calcium is uptaken for having more calcium uptake. This IP3, they are binding to this IP3 receptor. And then this ER to cytosol calcium also released. Okay, or when you uptake the caffeine, this caffeine receptor also they are release the calcium from the ER to cytosol. And during that time, circa this is the ER calcium saver. The circa is save the calcium to the ER. So in case of ER, these two channel going out, circa going inside. When you think about the cell membrane, SOC go inside, but this PMCA pump or potassium calcium exchanger, the calcium is going outside. Okay? So there are many, many calcium channel, but they are all balanced well. But not only cell membrane to ER, but also mitochondria, also calcium uniporter, they save the calcium, or sometimes they release the calcium. Okay? So when you think about a cell, cell membrane, ER nucleus, and mitochondria, they all are tightly regulated by many ion channels. But through this ion channel, the calcium is oscillated. How? Number one, you can see certain stimulus, electricity, stiffness, or certain like capsaicin, caffeine, or yoda-1, any stimulus. 
and then slow cash increase. Slow cash increase following the rise in Inositor P3. Inositor P3 is this IP3 is Inositor P3. Okay. And then explosive cash rise, fast activation of the Inositor P3 receptor. After this SOC is open first, and then this calcium make the IP3 cert using certain protein enzymatically, and then this relieve IP3, they bind. And the sudden increase of calcium. Initially, from the extracellular to cytosol, they are increased slowly, slowly, and the IP3 level is elevated in cytosol. And then, F IP3 sudden, finally bind to IP3R receptor, and then ER saved calcium release, and then they go up a lot. Okay? So, go IP3 binding and go up a lot, and then, this number three, IP3 receptor close. There's too much calcium. The slow inactivation of the IP3 receptor, the calcium is pumped back to the ER by circa. Oh, too much of a calcium? So circa, they are activated by the calcium level. More calcium level, high calcium level, they induce circa activated. And then they save the calcium. And then they go down. And then too much of a go down, and then slow recovery from IP3 receptor inhibition. There is no inhibitor of IP3 inhibitor. And then rebuilding of calcium up to threshold for activation, this time decrease if inhibitor 3 increase. So you can imagine, initially extracellular to inside the media, and inside of cell, calcium uptake. And then IP3 receptor activated, they deactivate, and then circa activated to ER state, and then go back. So because of this oscillation, and then very tightly regulated calcium ion channel, oscillation can happen. So normally, uh, the amount of calcium is people mentioned that SOC 90% and then ER 10%. And the SOC and channel, they are uh, looking like that. You can see calcium, there are calcium binding protein, carnosulin, and then many calcium binding proteins, so they are located. Now let's see this. Uh, normal and then remodel pulmonary artery. So you can depict this kind of image. This is a voltage gate channel, and this is piezo. Uh, sorry, this is SOC or I one two three or this piezo. And then from certain condition, let's say under certain condition, SOC and mechanical piezo activated and calcium uptake. When the calcium uptake, the IP three R receptor also activated, release calcium a lot, and then increase of calcium, and then through the circa, also they are safe, and then so maybe this voltage another like calcium potential pump also they are helpful for outside of the calcium to the outside. So this kind of scenario you always have to remember when you look at the calcium oscillation. This is another one. Mm. Okay. So we can see these two APB inhibitor of IP3R and the TRP channel inhibitor. Okay. So let's imagine when two APB non selective TRPM or IP3 receptor, when we when inhibit, what will happen? This TRP3 is involved in outside to inside cell, calcium. This is ER2 calcium, ER2 cytosol. So when we inhibit them, calcium level in cytosol go down. Okay? So 2 APB. Intracellular calcium go down inhibitor. And then this subsigar gene, this is deplete intracellular calcium stores. They, this ER calcium, ER level of calcium when there are enough of calcium in the ER, they can release by IP3 receptor. But when circa is inhibited, there is, a, there is no more calcium saving to the ER. 
And then, and initially, you can see increase of calcium level because the inside of cytosol, calcium, they never go inside of the ER. But during that time, also another calcium pump to the outside of cell, they are ongoing, right? To maintain their calcium level. And then what happened in the end? There's no ER calcium inside of cell. And then initially, calcium level can, can go up. But after one minute later, there's no calcium inside of ER. And then final calcium level can go down. Okay, you have to imagine this kind of scenario. So we learned this subsigag gene and then 2APB. Yeah, their circle inhibitor, IP3R and 2APB inhibitor. And then this is another example. Okay, when the PHO is activated, and then calcium uptake. And then when calcium uptake, somehow they can help for the binding to carpain or carmodulin, any kind of calcium high affinity protein, and then help for certain focus assembly or other kind of this PRC gamma activation. This enzyme is cleave the phospholipid of cell membrane and then making this IP3. And IP3, they are binding to IP3 receptor. And then finally, this inside of ER calcium leads to outside. And then they also can bind to CAMK. And then this is some helpful for another like ecadrine, disassembly, assembly, or some other pathway. This is the same manner. SOC, PHO, any count is calcium is uptaken, number one, uptake. And then this CIF, and from this cascade, this PLA, this enzyme is activated, and then they cleave the lipid of the cell membrane. And then they are making IP3. This IP3 binding to IP3R receptor, they release calcium, and then they are also sense of the circa to save it, or this calcium can go, out, go outside. So this kind of circulation of calcium, you can learn. Again, so another calcium cascade by ORI esteem. So this ORI esteem is a very interesting phenomenon. Let's see, extracellular calcium space, one to two millimole. So your media always have this 1.5 millimole or two millimole of calcium chloride or calcium, another calcium carbonate. But inside of cytosol, 50 to 100 nanomole. Okay, this is not nanomole, micromole, minimole, like 100 times difference. Okay, so let's imagine when you open calcium channel freely, suddenly this whole calcium goes inside and the cell can be dead. So that is why cell membrane should be intact to control the calcium level, and then this ion channel are heavily moved to control the calcium. But interestingly, ER calcium level, relatively higher than cytosol, okay, or, or around one millimole. So ER and extracellular space, one, two millimole, one millimole, inside, one hundred nanomole, okay. Like this condition, let's imagine, okay, from the ORI SOC, SOC ion channel is activated, and calcium inside. And then, when calcium inside, this PLC is activated to cleave the PIP2, and then IP3 is made, released, and IP3 receptor bind, and calcium go inside. And then, when a IPCR calcium released from ER, inside of, calci inside of calcium level in ER, decrease. This is detected by STEAM 1 and 2. Okay, they feel all our calcium level of inside of ER decrease. And then they are binding together and they link to the, this ORI 1 to 3. So STEAM clustering and link to the ORI 1. And then ORI action 
again to fill the interstellar calcium level. Once again, calcium inside without this clustering. And then because of this calcium, IP3 receptor increase, ER calcium level decrease, and STEAM 1 and 2 cluster, and then give more signal to the calcium, or I want to three, please give me more calcium level. And then again, you use this calcium pump, the calcium level go inside. While they are doing that, maybe another this potential calcium or sulca, they are activated. So this kind of calcium, IP3, steam cluster is one of the well-known calcium cascade by ORI steam pathway. Okay, and then from the literature understanding, we can a little bit understand our previous finding. So the number one paper is about the characteristics of the calcium signaling pathway in human MSC. When you culture the your cell, 4 million more calcium media, you can see this kind of calcium oscillation, you can see. Around the duration, the frequency is every two minutes, one oscillation, right? When you incubate them, uh, without calcium-free calcium media, also you can see some calcium oscillation. Oh, which means that your stem cell, regardless of where, where you are culture, calcium, normal calcium media culture, or calcium-free media culture, they show oscillation. This is a basic finding. Where this calcium oscillation happen? From the ER to cytosol, right? Even there is no calcium in the media, the stem cell, they have their own oscillation through this ER to cytosol cascade. Okay, after this finding, they want to know this ER to cytosol, what is the key channel to regulate them? Circa. Circa is cytosol to ER. Calcium channel, right? When they inhibit by the CP CPAA, what happened? So in normal and in without calcium media, calcium oscillation basically you can see. But after treating the CPAA to block the cytosol to ER calcium, suddenly the calcium oscillation gone. Okay, which means that the calcium oscillation is depending on the circa, oh, circa channel. Okay, we can get one finding. From MSC, MSC they can have calcium oscillation regardless of the calcium media concentration. And then when without calcium media, calcium free media condition, the circa is depending, circa is involved. Okay, and then you culture them, this 4 millimole calcium, and then acetylcholine, this is inositol P3 receptor activator. Near the ER, and then you change the media to zero calcium. Hmm. So zero calcium, while zero calcium, this acetylation, acetylcholine, they can show one peak, which means that oh, without calcium, this is working on well. And then, with the calcium level, this RYR rhodonin activator caffeine treated. There is no peak, which means that uh, this uh, IP3R receptor is heavily activated in this MSC, but because they don't have this rubonin receptor, even, the, even under the caffeine, they cannot react. They cannot make the calcium oscillation. So IP3R receptor mediates the release of calcium from ER and generate calcium inside oscillation in human MSC, not this receptor. Another experiment is that two APB, which block, as you can imagine, they can block these two things. They decrease the calcium down, block this, this, and this, and then there is no calcium oscillation. And then when they use acetylcholine, they don't have any peak, which means that when they block this IP3 receptor using this 2APB, 
even the acetylcholine, they are uh, binder to this receptor, they never happen. So there is a question. And then, same, they maintain this. So like that, people are playing with the calcium inhibitor and the extracellular calcium media concentration to show the phenomenon or what they found. This is another inhibitor, TG. TG is, right, TG. TG is circa inhibition, right? They deplete the ER calcium level. And then, under the TG for a long time, as you can see, initial TG treated, initially they're going up because the cytosol ER calcium blocked. But more blocking, which means there is a depletion of ER calcium level. So there's no calcium oscillation. But when they use 4 millimole calcium media outside of cell, they start to show the calcium oscillation or calcium uptake. So we can say that somehow they are compensatedly behave. Okay? And then without calcium media, 4 millimole calcium and 4 millimole plus atelinium ion. This is SOC inhibitor. And then on the CPAA, CPAA is deplete of intracellular calcium store. So on peak, a little bit happened, but they there is no more no more calcium oscillation. When the four millimole calcium outside and zero with no peak, four millimole, and then they treat this latinium SOC inhibitor, they go down. So we can say that this uh, increase of calcium from the 4 millimole calcium media is from the SOC channel. Uh, like that, you can play with this kind of inhibitor and then media condition to say something about the phenomenon. Yes, and then they check the ion channel protein amount. Uh, sorry, this is, actually they, they check the PCR here. Uh, they check inositor P receptor type 1 to 3, and then this R1 receptor. You can see this receptor have high expression, but R1 receptor, they don't have. So that is why under caffeine treatment, they don't give any signal of calcium. In case of associated calcium channel, they are located in cell membrane. They detect not all, but alpha-1A, alpha alpha-1H, TRP4. But not all channel are detected in your cell. So, so like that, from the PCR or Western blood, uh, you can see uh, my cell, which kind of ion channel we have. Now depending on them, you can design your experiment depending on the media concentration and then ion channel inhibitor. So overall, combined all together, this paper they said that anterior calcium from the plasma membrane is mediated by SOC. For example, when you use this, not latinium, but gadolinium, for example, and under gadolinium, similarly, they show go down, and then we can say that anterior calcium from the plasma membrane under uh, under cell under cell media condition, calcium media condition, is mediated via stretch mediated ion channel. Okay. So here they use like calcium free media or calcium media, but in, in our case we can use different stiffness. For example, you use your, you culture your cell on one kilopascal gel, and then check the calcium. While you check calcium, okay, you can see very little calcium behave. But suddenly, when you use, when you increase the stiffness or hydrogel using light, and then you can start to show more high calcium oscillation. So something like. You can design and imagine how this calcium behave. So I will present this another PPT for the next time.
So from this uh, PPT presentation, you can more deeply imagine how the calcium oscillation you can detect and design it for your own experiment. So this calcium oscillation present class is ongoing to next week. And then as a, in the, instead of the exam, after this class, I will suggest to give us some tasks like you have already your own experiment. So after taking this class and then reading the last paper, which are very good for calcium oscillation or calcium imaging assay, after reading the paper, you have to give me some summary of the one page plus your one page calcium oscillation or calcium imaging plan. Yeah, this, this is my just initial two class task instead of the exam, okay? Mm. So we have all calcium machine, calcium dye, and then after learning this class, you can design how to detect the calcium in your platform, okay? Different cancer cell, stem cell, ES compression, or fibroblast, any kind of, you are involved in on your experiment. So any, any way you can see this calcium imaging. So maybe this cannot be huge thing for your assay, but this can be just another like one supportive data. But when you say some calcium imaging, maybe reviewer will love it to see it. Yeah. Because this is very blink and beauty, and then many physiologically also, you, we can say one sentence, or oh, maybe this kind of stiffness dependent increase of cell migration is also heavily involved of calcium oscillation. Mm. This is another like understanding of your phenomenon. Okay? Okay? See you on Thursday.